This is section 5 of Learning E2, which is called Adding Some Style. In the previous section, we learned how to create a secure login system for our users. In this section, we'll learn about layouts, which are used to control visual elements that appear on multiple pages. Then, we'll learn how to manage scripts and style sheets using E2 asset bundles. Next, we'll learn how to quickly generate HTML code using the HTML Helper class. Finally, We'll put together everything we've learned in order to create a profile detail page for our monsters. We'll begin with the first video of this section, all about Yi2 layouts. We've already learned that the visual aspects of an MVC application are handled by the view component. However, most application views contain elements that are common to multiple views, and it would be very tedious to have to edit these elements in individual view files when making changes. That's where layouts come in. We'll learn all about them in this video. A navigation menu is an element common to multiple pages in a web application, so we'll look at Yi's menu widget. But we may also have views that require an alternate layout, so we'll also learn how to build an additional layout and apply it to selected views. Let's dive right in and take a look at the layout our current application is using. Open up Views, Layouts, Main.php. This is the default layout for the basic application template. At the top, you'll see a series of views statements as well as a call to the register method of the app asset class. We'll discuss asset bundles in further detail in the next video. After that, you'll see an HTML doc type declaration, as well as a standard head section. There are a few calls to methods such as begin page and begin body. These are the methods that the view component uses to inject front end assets into our layout. Below the opening wrap div, you'll see the code that generates our site navigation, which we'll look at more closely in just a minute. The part we're going to focus on right now is line 58, where Yi outputs the contents of the content variable. When the render method is invoked in a controller action, it loads this layout and then injects the code generated by the corresponding view into this content variable. We can confirm this by removing it momentarily and then reloading our application homepage. This should give you a good sense of what aspects of the page are part of the layout and which parts are generated in the view. Be sure to replace line 58 before moving on. Now that you understand what the layout does, let's look at one of the more interesting components, the navbar. Widgets are components that are used to generate small, reusable UI modules for your application. If it isn't already obvious, he integrates with Twitter Bootstrap in order to shorten front-end development time. The navbar widget simply outputs HTML code to generate a Twitter Bootstrap navbar. We're not going to be creating an award-winning design for our application in this course, but let's edit a few of the default options just to see if we can learn how to customize its appearance. A logo might be a nice addition to our site layout. We've included one in Web, Images, Logo.ping in the code samples. In order to include one, we'll need to get rid of the black bar at the top, which means changing the navbar inverse class to navbar. We'll also get rid of the navbar fixed top class in order to allow it to scroll with the rest of the site. Next, we'll change the brand label setting and replace the default text with an image tag. Next, let's change our links in order to accurately reflect the main pages of our application. You can configure your menu using the items attribute of the nav widget. Let's change the home page link to a members link and link it to our monster listing page. Simple enough, right? Skipping ahead, if you look at the code that generates the login and logout links, you'll notice that it uses a ternary operator in order to generate a login link if the user hasn't logged in yet, and a logout link if they have. We could do this with our register and profile pages, but instead, let's learn an alternate syntax. Create two more configuration arrays, but this time give them an extra index, visible. This takes a Boolean value, which determines whether the menu item is displayed or not. In the case of our register link, we only want it to appear if the user hasn't logged in yet. Conversely, we only want our profile link to appear for registered users. Also notice that the URL setting for the profile link, we provide a second parameter to the action update in the monster controller so that the application knows to load the currently active user's profile. Head over to our browser, and you'll see that our register links appear as expected. Login is Dracula, and you'll see that the register link 
will be replaced with the profile link. Finally, wouldn't it be nice if we could apply a different layout to some of our views? For instance, our application homepage probably doesn't need a menu or a footer. So let's duplicate our main layout file and call it simple.php. Delete all of the nav and nav barcode, the breadcrumbs, and the site footer. Next, switch over to the index view, which is located in Views Site. Just to be thorough, we'll change the title of this page to Monster Mash. I'm going to add a use statement for the URL helper, which will help me generate a link in the next step. Change the heading and lead text to so something a little more appropriate, as well as the button text. Finally, we'll use the URL helper in order to generate a link to our monster listing page. The last step is to tell our view to use the simple layout. This is achieved by opening up the site controller and modifying the action index method. Set the layout attribute of the controller equal to simple. Now, open the home page of your application and you'll see that Yi has applied our simpler layout. But click on the button and you'll see that the interior pages are still using our main layout. Now that you understand what layouts are and how to use them, you should feel comfortable customizing elements that appear in multiple views in your application. In the next video, we'll learn how to manage front-end assets, such as JavaScript and CSS, using asset bundles.